Leslie Meredith with Break Woke Events and Media. We're here in Houston at Break Woke Americas. We've just finished our last big conference session today. I think we saved the best for last. Technology. Um, yeah, Always technology. Exciting. We love that. So the first panelist I have here in the studio is John from Siemens. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So um, give us an idea of, of how Siemens plays in the technology arena. So Siemens, Siemens is a very, very large company um, that's uh, presence literally every country in the world. We have about 360,000 employees and uh, are a little over 165 years old as an organization. And we're focused on three main things. Electrification, which is generating electricity and applying it. Automation, which is controlling how that, uh, that electrification flows and improving what, what it does. And digitalization. So I work on the digitalization space. So between those three pillars, um, the, uh, the Siemens is, is trying to advance, uh, uh, in, trying to use innovation to help customers and really uh, 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 people around the world apply innovation and ingenuity to really improve the quality of life, whether, uh, whether it's uh, green electricity uh, power generation, whether it is improvements in our, our healthcare business, whether it's producing better products uh, to, for logistics professionals to be able to accomplish their tasks, uh, whether it's producing um, the, the digital, the innovation capabilities, software technologies and simulation tools to be able to produce more reliable, uh, effective uh, capabilities for whatever for what we're trying to do. So, okay, so uh, Siemens isn't always visible yep. in, in products around us. Can you yep. just give us a few of everyday examples yep. of where you are? Yep. Well, for example, I, I'm from Calgary, Alberta, up in Canada. So glad to be back down here in Houston. Um, the, 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 the light rapid transit trains uh, that, that we use in Calgary and in numerous cities around the world are produced by Siemens. We have a very, very large business producing healthcare, CAT scans and x-ray machines. We produce um, turbines and drives that generate power. We're one of the largest software companies in the world. People, people don't think of us that people way. People do not. No, they, they don't. Right. We're kind of in the background uh -huh. on a lot of this stuff, but we make a lot of what people use. We produce the tools that, that uh, improve the quality of what people are working with, whether it's the cars they drive, the planes they fly in, the phones that they're speaking in, um, the equipment that's being used in, uh, in, in logistics uh, uh, capabilities around uh, uh, in, in ports, for example. So we're often not a, a, a really forward, flashy organization, but it's, I can tell you it's a very, very smart, analytical, uh, engineering-driven company that, that does a lot of things really, really well. Maybe flash in the pan we could do more of. I um, think so. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah may, maybe. Maybe. All right, well, fill us in on some of the technologies that you talked about in the session. Yeah, so what we were, what we were drilling into in the session was applying innovation to uh, improve the logistics around energy. So specifically, we talked about the use of a digital twin. Now, what does what that mean? That? Yes. Yeah, what, what does, does that mean? mean? Everybody, everybody's got a digital twin. <laughs> Do I have one? Heck, I, I probably one. have one. He's, he's over there, but he's, he's, got, he's got his brightness turned down right now. So, so the digital twin is really the, if you think about the physical asset, it could be your phone or it could be a crane. Um, the digital twin is the information supporting everything about that. It's behavior, it's design, how to maintain it, how to improve it, all the specifications. So the, the, the digital twin, um, to be able to get full value out of a phys physical asset, um, you know, we believe that the owners of those assets or the, the, the practitioners on those projects need that digital twin plus the virtual asset to be able to get full value out of it, to be able to optimize its life, to be able to uh, prevent the next failure, okay, uh, to can be you able give to... Us an example that, that people here would be familiar with? Yeah, uh, something that we talked about on... Uh, on, uh, Siemens produces offshore wind uh, turbines, for example, uh, and onshore ones. But for this example, um, we talked about the use of drone technology, um, which was which was a hot topic at this year's show, where we're using drones to do inspections on uh, on uh, physical uh, drives out on the ocean, 
often in, in, in uh, conditions where safety is a challenge so that the, drone, the drones can inspect the physical asset and we can compare what they're seeing back to the digital asset. So rather than having to send a person out there, um, we can apply technology to be able to accomplish more um, with less risk to, uh, to human safety. Oh, well that sounds good. I'm yeah. certain everyone supports that idea. Yep, yep. That's excellent. Yep. So, <clears throat> excuse me, as we look forward, say 10 years from now, what, might our, what changes might our industry have undergone? based on technology. Yeah, I think I think things that you want to look out for, for example, uh, additive manufacturing, which is a fancy way of saying 3D printing. Okay. Um, you know, 3D printing has been around for a while. Um, you know, and, and not, a, not a long while, but a few years ago, for example, um, 3D printing was using kind of paper mache, starchy types of um, matrices to be able to produce something. Um, now we're using all metallurgies. So uh, I think additive manufacturing is a trend that, regardless of the business that, you in, that you're in, in terms of any kind of physical asset, if you don't think it's going to impact your world, you probably need to look into it, because it is, it is absolutely coming. And, you know, for example, in, uh, in the offshore rig business, uh, or the shipping business, where access to spare parts is sometimes a challenge, um, you know, with 3D printing, as long as the, 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 the rig owner or uh, the, the ship's captain has access to the digital model, that digital twin of the ship, they can print the part that they need in all likelihood, as opposed to have to keep one of everything. So logistics is one of those fields where you've got to have the right people with the right material at the right place at the right time. And it's very, very easy for something to go wrong. Technologies such as digital printing are going, to, are going to prevent an awful lot of headaches and outages in the field that otherwise would have disrupted schedule or scope. So I think Absolutely. that's going to be that's going and to be a real driver. And the cost of a project, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And digitalization in general, with with the rate of change, the rate of improvement of technology, and at the same time, um, the computing power available from uh, the cloud, for example, some of the cloud services providers where. Um, where they have entire server farms, for example, mm -hmm. that can bring more computing power than any one company is, is going to be able to focus on its own. So with that kind of computing power, on the software side, we can then turn around and develop capabilities that might not have worked on your server, but they'll work in that environment. So you can see this iterative effect going back and forth where we improve the capabilities, we improve the microchip, we improve the software that drives it, and ultimately it takes us to a better place. So I think there's, there's a tremendous opportunity there, whether, whether you're trying to produce a more reliable piece of equipment or, uh, or, or, or take your company to a carbon neutral uh, uh, status, for example. Siemens has a goal of being carbon neutral by 2030, and we're on track. So for an organization of 360,000 people, that's not a small thing. How are we doing that? An awful lot of innovation. So it's, it, these are very, very challenging tasks. But um, I think the other resource that we need to keep an eye on are the young kids coming out of the schools because they're hungry for these, for these capabilities. So um, it's, it's, uh, it's important for employers like Siemens, um, some of the big technology companies, to continue to work with directly with the academic community because while we'll be the first to say we've got to have more science, technology, engineering, math graduates, you know, it also means we need to support those and, and work with them to take advantage of the work they're doing. So there's a tremendous amount of uh, good work to be done because you know, we have a lot of big problems that we've got to solve. But that's what I like about the energy industry is that we'll get through all of this. You know, we're, we're, we're through the worst of the, uh, the correction a few years ago. We're back off, we're off the bottom. Um, and I think you'll see at, at the end of the day, the industry vastly improve what it does and how it does it. Honestly, because we were forced to. That's, 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 that's how things happen. We'll look right? at that as a silver lining. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thank okay. you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate it.